Hello and welcome, I'm Just One Life, and today we're playing Mono Black Sacrifice in Alchemy, the new format on Arena. So, some of the new cards we're playing with is Cursebound Witch. She lets you draft cards from her spellbook, and when you get to draft, it pulls random three cards out, you get to select one of those three cards. So the cards in her spellbook are these ones I'll slowly cycle through as I talk about other cards in our deck. So we also get to play uh, one of the other new cards that creates a copy or conjures a copy of a creature that you know and love from from ages ago, Blood Artist. So we have Sanguine Brushstroke. Blood Artist will let you drain them every time any creature dies, yours or theirs. So if you can get like two Blood Artists out and sweep the board with a Ma Mitog Massacre, or if you can get Vulnerant Bloodcasters out and make blood tokens, and then Sanguine Brushstroke lets you drain them when you sacrifice a blood token, it turns out to be really powerful. In fact, even if you change your uh, blood tokens into bats, they remain blood tokens also. So if you get to sweep the board or your bats just die, Sanguine Brushstroke will still drain your opponents for one. So here's the deck list. We have some sacrifice outlets in Hostel Hotel, um, our Deadly Disputes, and that's just about it, and that's all we need. So, let's get into some games and see how well Mono Black Sacrifice does in Alchemy. Also, if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button down there, it really helps a small creator like me. Thank you very much. Okay, this is a one-lander, so it's really risky. I think I have to mulligan it. Sure. And we'll put away our Fell Stinger. We are on the draw. A second sanguine brushstroke. <clears throat> We're against clerics. We'll get in there. No blocks. Should we play a Volder Bloodcaster? We'll wait to start sacrificing creatures. Now let's see if they gain life. If they gain life, they can attack through the Bloodcaster. Kabira Takedown. Sure. Yeah, that's... That's a play. I'm actually fine with that play. No attacks. We'll use our Shambling Ghast to block. Unless they can gain life. Okay, they're going to draft a spell. Let's get another Sanguine Brushstroke out there. Second Blood Artist. And we'll just pass. We're pretty set up now. So we just need to draw some action cards. A second Voice of the Blessed. They attack in with their Faithful Disciple. You know what? I'll take the two. Because I want a Deadly Dispute Shambling Ghast away, and I'm not willing to sham uh, Deadly Dispute our Blood Artist away. So, goodbye Shambling Ghast. Let's get a treasure and draw a couple cards. You lose two life. What do we get? Okay. I twitch. Play land. And we can deadly dispute our I twitch away. And use it as a blocker. <clears throat> Maybe we'll draw a Mitok Massacre. That wouldn't be bad. Attack with all. Sure. We'll put it in front of one of the voices. And Daily Dispute. You lose a life. You lose a life. And we're at the point we can learn a mascot exhibition. Although Pest Summoning might be better. Nah, we'll get a mascot exhibition. There's no way Pest Summoning is better than mascots. And we have plenty of mana to cast it. And 
an infernal grasp in case one of these creatures gets out of hand. We only have to use one treasure for the mascot exhibition? Sure. What do you have to say about this, opponent? Kabira, takedown. Sure. You lose a life, and you lose a life. No attacks, of course. Blood Artist is a terrible attacker. Another Lunark. So. They're going to start growing their voices. Just the Faithful Disciple. I think we will block. Our creatures dying is not bad for us. And we get to drain them now. Drain. Drain. And drain. Drain. It's whenever any creature dies, so we get four triggers. Infernal Grasp will help us. I think it's time to start sacrificing these blood tokens. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, you gain a life. Okay. This is a flashback from Kaladesh. So they'll gain a life from Shambling Ghast entering. Do we want to play Shambling Ghast in that case? We will get to sacrifice something with Hostile Hostile. Let's use one of our blood tokens. Discard a swamp. They lose two life. I feel like I can put together a victory on this turn if I can play the right cards. So let's sacrifice another blood token. Discard the swamp we drew from discarding a swamp. They lose two life. Oh yeah, we do. We have the win. Can't believe we're drawing swamp after swamp, though. How terrible. Alright, Twitch. And now we Infernal Grasp one of their voices. And they lose four life. Game over. We've assembled the victory. Oh no, only one creature died. It's alright. We have a land and a hostile hostile to sacrifice our last creature and do our last two points. Win assembled. Good game, clerics. Couldn't gain enough life. We've got a witch and a twitch. A witch and a twitch. And I'll start out with... No, we want to play a turn one creature, of course. And I think it's the Eye Twitch. Not the Witch. Gotta play the Twitch. No sleeves. Let's get everything out there. And we might just play this uh, Agadim's Awakening as a land untapped just to get our brushstroke out there. Ooh, it's blue-white. Yikes, and we played only creatures up until now, but now... It uh, hurts us because we can't play this brushstroke. So we'll just kill Thalia. Fell Stinger. Exploit Shambling Ghast. I'll lose two life and gain two cards. And they'll lose a Thalia. <clears throat> Get in there for two damage. What do you say about that, opponent? Are they playing Thalia in a blue-white control spells deck? This is pretty odd. If the card they have is Juari Disruption, it does not 
stop it because we have an extra land. They have a fading hope, perhaps. Spectral adversary. So they want to block something. Fell stinger. Sure. We'll take you to lose a life. Twice. And we could use this blood token. Discard maybe our swamp. Sure. Let's use it. Drew a swamp instead, so fine. At least we don't have a swamp sitting on the top of our library. Opponent is already at 12. Through two creatures. And they have a Dream Shackle Geist. At the beginning of combat on your turn, tap a creature, or target creature doesn't untap. Okay, our Chris Bound Witch does not untap. Fine. So we could just Meat Hook, kill everything. Or we can Voldoran Bloodcaster. And we can Meat Hook, kill everything except Curse Bound Witch. Oh, they've given up. They are not good enough against Mono Black Sacrifice to navigate their way through these dangerous situations. Sorry about your luck, spirits. Alright, this opening hand seems fine. I Twitch and Shambling Ghast. We'll start out with the Shambling... With the I Twitch, I mean. Sword of Dawn. Is that like the Hammer of Dawn? get our Deadly Dispute active. We want probably Environmental Sciences. Now let's get Pest Summoning. Ooh, a couple of land. Let's not cast the Shambling Ghast and spend our treasure. Do a little bit of hand reorganizing here. They just straight pass as fast as they can. Blue-red spells. Pest summon. Get in there. Okay, they're going to consider. They dump Fading Hope. So next turn we can attack with these guys. We can Fell Stinger one away and play Shambling Ghast follow-up. Alright, so it looks like they're just guy control. Let's try attacking. Boom, boom. Fell Stinger. Does it resolve? They are divide by zero mana. They don't divide. Goodbye, pest. I'll lose two life and draw two cards. And then I'll follow up with a Shambling Ghast. Go ahead. <clears throat> consider again. They really like to consider. And they dumped this Needle Bridge Pathway. They're up to eight cards in hands. Of course, we're still at seven. All of our card draw has been pretty good. They've been playing all these cantrips. But we've been playing permanence. Geist, Ch Geist Channeler. So cool. They picked a spell in their hand. Probably a burn spell or a sweeper. And got it permanently cheaper. So. We can grasp our way through this Geist Channeler. I'm not so sure I like that. Because I think they're going to cast a sweeper so what if we pay four to activate this hive we can hostile hotel away the shambling ghast make a treasure okay we're gonna make this series of plays sacrifice shambling ghast Make a treasure. 
Now we have four mana to pay for the hive. Hive is active. We get in there with these two creatures. They can't block the hive and we take away their fading hope. Yep. They block the fell stinger, which is a sure sign of a sweeper. I think we navigated that turn the best we could to play around a sweeper effect. So let's see, do they have like a burning down the house? Alright, they want specific colors from their lands. They want to leave this deserted beach open. Teferi. Okay, so what are they playing for two mana after Teferi to keep it alive against all my stuff? There's the sweeper. Alright, they got the sweeper. So we only have one mana creatures in our graveyard. So Agadim's Awakening... Kind of sucks there. So what if we activate Hive and attack? We could just play this Fell Stinger. One, two, three, four, five. I think we activate Hive. I let the auto-tapper get me, though. I wanted to use Hostile Hotel so I could play Shambling Gash afterwards. Now I've got extra one mana that's just unused. Aw, oh, lame. Puh. Wow, I can't believe they surrendered there. We had not sealed that game away. Maybe they just knew that we took all their good stuff out of their graveyard and they couldn't handle it. Deadly dispute, but no one drop to sacrifice. We are on the play also. We'll keep it. Because we do have a two mana Volder and Bloodcaster here to put in. And we're playing against probably Mono Green, although maybe Werewolves. It looks like Mono Green. Hive, you are a turn too late there, buddy. Let's get a Sanguine Brushstroke. Come in for two in the air. And they can play a chariot. Modified chariot. No. They still want to untap a land and play a pack leader. Okay. So we play the sad <laughs> hive. Get a curse bound witch into play. We'll attack with our Bloodcaster. And we'll just pass. We can Infernal Grasp if we feel like we absolutely need to, but I plan on using Deadly Dispute with Cursebound Witch and drafting a card from their spellbook. Olvenwald Oddity. Okay, it looks like it is Infernal Grasp time. They have another Ascendant Pack Leader. So I kill the Oddity, drain them for one, and that means this doesn't come in with an extra counter on it. And I can't Deadly Dispute now. I'll take the seven. We drew a Fell Stinger. Let's get it into play. Sacrificing our first bound witch. And drawing two cards. Okay, what do we want from the spell book? Torment of Scarabs is pretty annoying. Yeah, let's get the Torment. We won't be casting it this turn, but we can still Deadly Dispute. 
So what do we want a deadly dispute? Not fell stinger. So let's not attack with anything, and we'll deadly dispute away our Voldemort Bloodcaster and kill something with our fell stinger. Make their turn very difficult, because they don't know about our deadly dispute, of course. So they think that we've got a two power blocker here. Okay, they want to pay a Renin 7. Ooh, and that grows their pack leaders. Sure. Yep, make a big old... Oh, it's not that big. It's a small tree folk. It's a teeny tiny tree folk. Alright. So we will kill the pack leader. Block here, since it has trample. And then we'll deadly dispute... Do we even want a deadly dispute? We just kill both their permanents. You know what? We'll deadly dispute. We'll deadly dispute one of our blood tokens away. And kill both of their creatures. Both of their pack leaders. Which makes the Torment of Scarabs much worse. For them. Drain four life away. Make two more blood tokens. And actually, we're in a position where we can meat hook massacre for four. Let's do it. Just straight up make your life very difficult. And we'll drain them for four, too. There we go. Resolve all those triggers, please. Let's see what we got here for their next turn. They go all the way down to four. We can sacrifice a blood token for one extra damage. Torment of Scarabs is going to start getting them. Sacrifice a non-land permanent. And they're so low they can't bear to lose the three life, so they have to start sacrificing. Double old growth troll. It's pretty good. So we'll get the torment in play. Targeting them. We'll get a blood caster into play. And we have the treasure to deadly dispute. Or we could just sacrifice our blood caster right now. Get one damage in with meat hook. No. No, let's just play it properly. So, sacrifice something, please. If you don't, you're dead because I'll sacrifice a blood token. Alright. They discarded a card. They discarded a Sculptor of Winter. They make a 5 5 tree folk. Cool. Come in for 8 damage. I think I just take it. Let's see, I have a 2 and 3 and 1. So casting this for 6 is good. Which means if I want a Deadly Dispute right now, that would be best. So let's do it. Deadly Dispute. Sacrificing a Blood Token. You lose a life, I gain a life. And I get to draw 2 cards. Sweet. Good game indeed. I don't even get to play the Agadim's Awakening pulling three creatures back. Oh, that would have been great. <laughs> we had game on board anyway. So how did Mono Black Sacrifice do? Well, 
Uh, it felt really nice when we got to draft cards out of here. It was a little bit random, it felt like, so we couldn't really depend on Cursebound Witch, but the options are mostly pretty good, so we could count on her giving us something that was usable. At least. Eye Twitch, of course. Shambling Gas, of course. They're all-star mainstays. Our Voldoran Bloodcaster often was able to flip, which was interesting to me because five blood tokens is tough to get to. Um... The Sanguine Brushstroke making Blood Artist copies was pretty cool. And although we didn't really get to do it, uh, Agadim's Awakening pulling back Blood Artist uh, Conjures was possible since it actually makes real Blood Artists, not tokens. So that was an interesting synergy I thought played well in the deck. I wouldn't mind going up to a fourth Agadim's Awakening after playing this deck since it didn't really hurt us any. Uh, we could go up on high, hive, hive of the Eye Tyrants, and overall, this deck performed pretty well. The Learn Board worked just as well, and uh, yeah. Uh, no Planeswalkers, though, in this version, which I think works out. I wouldn't mind seeing maybe just one or two copies of a Planeswalker, although we're much less of a delay-the-game deck like the old Mono Black is, where Mono Black Control. We are Mono Black Sacrifice, so I think it plays well. Anyway, let me know what you think about the deck, if you would make changes. Until next time, fist bump, high five, take it easy.